Oh, hello. You may notice that this is a bit of a different intro to my videos typically, and that would be because when recording this week's show, The Almost Awesome Show, episode 33, I, like an idiot, did not record my guests' voices. That's right. I got video of them, and I had two guests this week, but no audio. So you're going to see possibly a little bit of a disjointed video. I tried to limit it as much as possible, make it as cohesive as I could with what I had to work with so that the video and the story still gets out to you. But if you hear me reference another person that does not seem to be there, that's because there were two other people there, actually. Triv from Trivial Theater and Nick from Movie Emporium. But unfortunately, I was unable to include their footage because my dumb ass didn't flip a switch. But I do hope that even with those omissions, you still do enjoy this week's videos. And also, check out Triv's channel, Trivial Theater, and Nick's channel, Movie Emporium, when you get a chance. And of course, check out the Almost Awesome show that goes live every Wednesday afternoon at 2 p.m. Central Time. And with that, on with the show, or at least the part that I recorded. The greatest filmmaker ever made, or ever, to exist, is returning to cinema. I guess some somebody out there, one per, at least one person says that, him. <laughs> Uwe Boll, the man, the something, the boxer, <laughs> he is coming back. He retired a few years back, but he is now returning to filmmaking. Uh, those of you that uh, know anything about the situation, you may, some of you may be saying, who the fuck is Uwe Boll? Well, Uwe Boll made his, he got his name. He's made more than just video game movies, but he made a lot of video game movies. Um, and they were bad movies. Most of his movies are just bad all around. They're very low budget. He used like German tax credits or something like that to, to make most of them. They were all profitable somehow. I don't know how. But uh, the highest uh, budgeted movie he ever made was uh, Dungeon, a Dungeon Siege story. In the Name of the King, a Dungeon Siege story with uh, Jason Statham, which uh, I have a review of. I have a review of all his video game movies on my channel, so you can check them out. They're not good. He, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's got some bad ones, some real bad ones. Actually, the wor in my opinion, the worst video game movie ever made was directed by him. That would be Blood Rain 3, The Third Reich. Um, but one of the funniest, not the best, one of the funniest video game movies ever made, Postal, was also made by him. But he retired a few years back. He's also known for um, boxing some of his critics. He actually went into the boxing ring, looked that up. That is very interesting. He punched one of the critics so hard he puked on the street. But um, he retired and said, I'm through this shit. He's been doing little like reviews i guess on his youtube channel or whatever and some extremely entertaining letterbox reviews his videos now he just sits in his office and talks shit about other filmmakers and calls them stupid fuck shits and, and says he's the greatest filmmaker ever made he's a very eccentric interesting dude but after a seven-year hiatus from the industry that included setting up a restaurant in canada Bowl is making his return with an action thriller titled 12 Hours. The feature follows a man who returns with his family to Cape Town, South Africa, for his mother's funeral. Only for his whole family to get kidnapped, leaving him with 12 hours to kill five people to get his family back. So it's like Taken, but cranked up to 11, I guess. I don't know. They stole his whole fucking family. Just took the whole thing. It will be produced through Bowl's outfit event film productions it aims to shoot in cape town in march next year bull is self-financing the feature with a budget of nine million dollars bull has made 34 films to date and is best known for critically panned video game adaptations including alone in the dark blood rain and house of the dead that went on to become a cult went on to become cult hits and commercial successes thanks to home entertainment releases now i will say for those three those are probably his three most well-known alone in the dark is fucking terrible just through and through awful uh blood rain not much better it's a little better but it's pretty fucking bad too uh, uh house of the dead if you go in with the right mentality that movie's funny as shit and it's really fun it's pretty awesome <laughs> i fucking hated it when i first saw it but if you go in with the right mindset that movie's pretty pretty damn good not not good it's pretty it's so bad it is literally a so bad it's good movie um he said i can't bash these titles in retrospective uh said bowl 
They were necessary for the rest of my career and for my independence. I can not say I regret them. They made money. And he's right. His movies, um, almost all of them, have been financially successful. And as we talked about earlier in another story, movie making is a business. It's the movie making business. So there is a money financial aspect to it all. <clears throat> and he's been successful there. Bull is also working on a feature called Ness, which he bills as a follow-up to The Untouchables and focuses on Elliot Ness, the agent who brought down Al Capone. He also has an eight-part Mayor of Easttown-style miniseries in early development, which he hopes to shoot in 2024. So, <clears throat> Uwe Boll is coming back. He said he's retired. He's not making movies anymore. Now, these aren't video game movies, and he has had moderate success with his non-video game movies. He had a series about... Um, I've seen part of one of them where a guy... I can't remember what it's called, but he, like, goes on a shooting spree. We follow an active shooter. <laughs> it's... <laughs> I, yeah, I don't, it's controversial is to say the least. There's three of the, I think it's three of those movies. One of them's like in a town, that's the first one, and then the other ones, I don't know where the other ones, I think one takes place in an office building. It's the same guy, I think. Um, so yeah, you follow an active shooter going on a shooter spree, like falling down or something, but a much less sympathetic villain. Um, so yeah, he has that. He's made some other, he made an Auschwitz movie which he is German, by the way. Um, I don't know if that movie was any good, honestly. I've not, not seen it. So, But he's very much more known for his video game movies. But he's back. And me, myself, personally, I can't fucking wait. The guy makes <laughs> shit films. But man, they're so bad, you just want to like sit. It's like a train wreck. You don't want to see it. And you're watching it, and you're like, this is so terrible to see, but I can't pull my eyes away from it. Like, I can't, the carnage, the absolute just, just shit show that's going on, I have to see this. And who knows? Maybe these will be a good movies. For the vast majority of his movies, they are played serious. They just come off really bad because they are bad. He did make a comedy movie called Blubberella. I haven't seen it, but I know it has a cult following. Um, and maybe that, it, with the exception, Postal 2, or Postal 2, Postal was a comedy. And it was a video game movie adaptation. Probably his, his best movie, but one of the most... Um, offensive movies ever made. Um, he definitely, he, pe most people don't make it past the first five minutes of that movie for a reason. But um, that that was one of his best movies, and that was one he played for laughs. So maybe that's his wheelhouse. He needs to go into that goofy era or area. It doesn't sound like this uh, 12 hours movie is going to be that. So, no. I don't know. It might be good. I mean, he, he, he has shown that when he has the money to make, like in the, uh, in the name of the king, uh, the Dungeon Siege movie, that's his most expensive movie with Jason Statham. It wasn't good, but it looked the part. I mean, he knows how to make movies. He he knows how to, like, you know, the, I'm not going to say art, the craft, the, um, the technical side of filmmaking. He knows how to do it. It's more the acting <laughs> and the, the artistic side of things. That's where he struggles. I do, I, I suggest going back with the right mindset and watching House of the Dead. There is no right mindset for Alone in the Dark. It's just wrong all around. But House of the Dead is funny as fuck if you go in with the right, knowing what you're getting. And Postal is funny as hell. But yeah, uh, Uwe's coming back. He's get, he's uh, working on this movie. He's about to start shooting 12 hours. Um, and then he's got a he, Untouchables 2 <laughs> and a show, I guess. I'm looking for, honestly, I'd like to see a movie about him just rating other movies. Yeah, I could sit here, he's not a good filmmaker, but man, I could sit here and listen to the guy talk about other, about movies. He is passionate, I will say that. He is a fan of film. He is very passionate about what he does. He strikes me as someone, and I said this before, who loves filmmaking, loves movies, and just is all about that world. And he has a true passion for it. But that just isn't quite enough in this case <laughs> because he's just not good at it. He's just not. So he wants to be. He wants so bad to be, but he's just not very good at it. I mean, I am not the biggest proponent of Marvel films, <clears throat> but to hear him compare like Marvel, a Marvel movie and call it stupid shit fuck, which it may be stupid shit fuck. But then to talk about how his movie, uh, I don't even remember which ones he was talking about, something like Alone in the Dark or something like that. 
is superior in every way to like in game. I'm like, oh man, you're you. Mm. <laughs> and Uwe Ball has been able to secure some famous faces, very famous faces in his films somehow. He's got like a private detective who or investigator who gets some dirt on him. He had Ben Kingsley in Blood Rain, who Ben Kingsley looked like he was dead in the movie. He's playing a vampire, but the whole time he's just Academy Award winning. Bing, winner Bing Hingley. He had Ray Liotta and um, Burt Reynolds in In the Name of the King. And man, the guy has worked with some some talent, but he's just brought the non-talent out of that talent. <laughs> he's got many gifts. He can box. I'll give him that. Watch that video. I want an, a, an Uwe Boll life movie, like his, uh, an, a, a biopic. I think that would be better than any movie he's ever put out. I mean, they did it for Ed Wood. He's the Ed Wood of our generation. Except I think Ed Wood didn't realize he was making bad movies. Anyway, um, Uwe Boll, yeah, he's not a good director, but I am. he is so eccentric and out there, I'm looking forward to this. I, I just want to see the, see like the Joker, I want to see the world burn. So, uh, but let us know in the comments below, uh, are you an Uwe Boll fan? If not, you should be. Maybe not of his movies, but just of him as a person. He's so out there. There's a movie called Fuck You, the Uwe Boll story. <laughs> That is the name of the movie. Fuck you, the Uwe Boll story. Um, that is a, a documentary that's worth, that. that's a fun movie. He didn't make it, it was a documentary about him. He's in it a lot, but that's worth checking out. But uh, as far as this, I have no idea if this will be any good. Probably not, but it's coming and I will definitely watch it and definitely review it just because why not? But let us know in the comments below if you're looking forward to Uwe Boll's triumphant return as the greatest director ever. Uh, and if you like any of his films, and I guess let us know what is your favorite Uwe Boll film.